Hi and welcome to this online training video for Automation Studio. In this video, we'll be starting from the basic hydraulic circuit that we created in the first hydraulic video. And we'll be going through a few shortcuts and the properties of each of those different components. To do so, I will want to duplicate the cylinder and rotate it to a 45 degrees angle and add a weight onto it. So we'll get started with a few shortcuts. The first shortcut I want to show you is how to duplicate a component. So if you hold down the control key and drag the component away, this way you will create a duplicate of it. Another very handy shortcut is to hold down the space key and then hold it with the mouse holding down the click. You can drag your sheet around, you can pan. Holding down the control key and using the mouse wheel, you will zoom in and out of your circuit. And finally, holding down the shift key will automatically disconnect or connect the component onto your schematic. Now I have my copied cylinder. If I connect it in parallel and I launch simulation, You'll see that both cylinders extend at the same speed at the same moment because they have the exact same parameters. If I want to change those, I can double click on my cylinder and open its data sheet. All the different components have data sheet that is constructed in different sections. The first section is the modeling. So a couple of properties that are used during calculation but that are not physical characteristics of the cylinder. So here we can see the extension percentage, for, for example, or the inclination. So I will set this to 45 degrees. The sec second section is the technical characteristics. So in here, you you'll be defining all the actual physical sizes of your cylinder. So a piston diameter, rod diameter, stroke. In here, we have millimeters in square and cubic centimeters. If you want to change those units, you can uh, select here from millimeters to inches, for example, and it will automatically convert. The third section is the external data. So if you want to have an external load or push and pull external forces. So here I will be adding, say, 10,000 pounds. You may have noticed the checkboxes on the left and the right of each of those parameters. Those boxes are to display the value of the set variable. So here, if I want to display my 10,000 pounds on my schematic, if I check the one on the left, it will always be displayed. And if I check the one on the right, it will only be displayed in a tooltip. So I'll, as a reminder, show the 10,000 pounds on my schematic at all times. And afterwards, you get the thermal section in which you can define the heat transfer coefficient. For more information about heat transfer simulation, please look at the thermal simulation video. Then we continue. The operating conditions are a maximum and minimal forces that you can define for each of your components. This will be used as a theoretic limit, as if your component exceeds one of those maximums you have defined you can have a warning sign displayed. Then we got the technical control. So here it's all the internal variables that can be sent to or from that cylinder. Under the plotter here, it's all the variables that can be uh, plotted in the plotter. And finally, a few identification fields and commercial fields for renaming your components, importing serial numbers, catalog numbers, manufacturer's cost, and so on. So now that we've defined the external load and the inclination on our cylinder, I will want to rotate my component on my sheet. Uh, all the components are ISO standard compliant, so Solution Studio is a professional drawing software. We don't usually rotate components, but for academic purposes, we may very well want to do so. So going into the Edit tab, under the position here, I can select my component and select Rotation. So now it's very intuitive to see that 
the cylinder will rise at 10,000 pounds load at a 45 degrees angle. And now as I start my simulation, we'll reduce the flow by redu reducing the displacement of my pump. And now as I extend my first cylinder, you notice we need about 12 PSI to extend this cylinder. Then as this one reaches the end, we will need about 600 PSI to raise then that 10,000 pounds up with that cylinder. Now as I retract my cylinder, you'll notice that this line becomes purple and we have negative PSI. Th this is because the external load of 10,000 pounds will drive my cylinder in, creating some capitation issue in my line, and that will be displayed with that purple color. So you notice minus 14 PSI here, and then as this one reaches the end, 21 PSI to retract my second cylinder. Changing the parameters of the cylinder may allow you to replicate any of the cylinders you have in your trainers and create virtual equipment. For more information about how to create your own library, please have a look at this video. So now we've seen the properties of the cylinder. Now we can have a look at the directional valve properties. So we get the data sheet here. So with the modeling section, technical characteristics, the thermal and operating condition, all the same sections. Now if we get to technical specifications of the valve, we can edit it. So we can change the, the control from a manual lever to any other type of command you may want. Same as for the spool configuration, you can double click onto it and change it from a wide choice of spool configuration available in Automation Studio. You can also have a look at the modeling of the different kind of valves. So in an on-off configuration as it is at the moment, you can only have the zero, minus 100 and the 100 percent. So if you look at the flow from the P port to the A port, notice it's closed at zero, 100 and minus 100. So there's those kind of curves for all the directional valves. If you have a proportional one, then you will have all the different flow opening according to the spool travel. You can also define the pressure drop curves and define some inter internal leaks. If you look at the pressure release valve. Here again, the data sheet with all the same structure. And in the technical specification here, here you can notice we have a pressure drop according to flow curves. So all the components can be customized to re reflect whichever component you have in your trainer. Finally, same for the pump here. We can have efficiency curves, overall efficiencies, and vis viscosity curves. Thanks for watching this online training video for Automation Studio. We invite you to watch the other videos and we'd like to thank you for your time.